Hello, I'm Promethea, your water intern on Salus Girl, and today I answer the question Have you already gone through hormone replacement therapy? You know, this is like a very simple question, and I was going to just reply to the comment, and that's it. But it reflects a very common misconception about hormone replacement therapy. So I thought that I would make a video to answer the question so that I could also explain a little bit more about hormone replacement therapy. You ask me if I have gone through hormone replacement therapy and the thing is that you don't go through it. You start it, but then you have to continue. I will go into why in a little bit, but just to answer your question simply, uh, no, I haven't started it yet. I'm waiting to be able to. The thing that is that here, like in most places, you need a diagnosis in order to be able to start. Uh, here in particular the process goes like this. You first have to meet a psychiatrist, then you have to meet a psychologist several times uh, to make some other studies, then you have another interview with a psychiatrist who then would give you the diagnosis that you are indeed trans. And then, if you want to do hormone replacement therapy, you would be referred to an endocrinologist and to other specialists for other treatments, depending on what you want to do. I, in fact, just had my interview with a psychiatrist, the first one, last week, and now I have my appointment with a psychologist uh, for the end of May. So it's probably going to be four to six months until I get my uh, diagnosis. And then the first thing that I want to do is to uh, actually freeze and save some sperm because I want to have that possibility and one of the things that hormone replacement therapy does is that you basically get sterilized. It is reversible but not in all cases so I want to have that safeguard and then once I made the uh, deposits I will begin the actual hormone replacement therapy and other things. So I'm really looking forward to start it. It is something that I want to do but right now I cannot do much more than wait. So well, why is it that you don't go through it, that you have to continue with it? Well, uh, hormone replacement therapy is not a procedure. Uh, it's an ongoing treatment. The purpose of hormone replacement therapy is not just as some people may think, okay, let's grow tits and cosmetic changes, if you will. Uh, of course, those are part of it. Those are parts of the effects that it has in most people, at least but they are not the only ones. Sexual hormones also have an effect on our brain chemistry. It produces changes on how we think, on how we feel about certain things, and one very common effect is that the feeling of dysphoria, the feeling of discomfort that most trans people have gets reduced in some degree, sometimes even completely. And if you stop taking hormones, then that feeling is going to come back. Also, some of the physical changes are going to go back. See, hormone replacement therapy, in the case of trans women or trans feminine non-binary folk who were assigned male at birth, causes changes like uh, the texture of the skin is different, it gets thinner and softer. If the person is young enough, uh, they may experience some widening of the hips. The body hair gets much less dense and coarse. There is a reduction in the muscle mass also. The distribution of fat in the body also changes. So instead of the fat getting deposits mostly on the belly, it tends to be deposited around the thighs, on the butt. And then, of course, there is breast growth. And then in the case of trans men or trans masculine non-binary folk assigned female at birth, they get changes like the lowering of the voice, they get facial hair growth, uh, they get more hair and coarser hair in the body, also the skin also go through similar, well, opposite changes. They have the opposite change in the distribution of bodily fat. If they are young enough, uh, maybe their hips are not going to get so wide. Maybe they will have wider shoulders or they are going to be taller. That depends also on their genetic background. And if you stop taking hormones, then of course the changes to the bone structures are not going to go back. The lowering of the voice in the case of trans men and trans masculine folk uh, is not reversible either, as is the facial hair or the breast growth for trans women and trans feminine folk. Uh, those are not reversible. 
but a lot of the other changes do get reversed if you stop taking hormones, especially if you haven't had your testicles or your ovaries removed, because part of what we call hormone replacement therapy is actually some blockers of the other hormones that your body is producing. So if you still have those glands, then you're going to go back to the old chemistry. But if you already have those removed, there is still another reason why you shouldn't stop taking hormones. It's that if you suddenly find yourself with no sexual hormones in your body, you're basically going through menopause. And there is a reason why cisgender women take supplements and sometimes hormone replacement therapy once they go through their natural occurring menopause. One of the most important reasons is bone density. Sexual hormones also have an impact in that. So if you find yourself with no estrogen or no testosterone in your body, your bones are going to get brittle. You will have a higher tendency to get in fractures. And in general, you're going to feel weaker. And those can be pretty big problems. Does that mean that trans women never go through menopause? Not really. You know, generally the doses and the hormone levels are adjusted depending on the stage of a person's life and what you're trying to achieve at that moment. In general, most trans women that are old enough to have menopause are going to adjust their levels and their dosages together with their gynecologist in a way that is appropriate for her age. And also, of course, it's going to depend on the particular school of thought that that gynecologist follows. Some prefer to continue to use hormone replacement therapy at a stage, while some prefer to address the bone density through other means like calcium supplements. So I hope that this gives you all a bit of a better understanding of hormone replacement therapy. Thank you very much for your question. Any other questions that you have, any suggestions, please let me know here in the comments or through Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram or Ask.fm. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and see you again next week. Bye-bye.